This video demonstrates an ACL reconstruction with hamstring tendon graft using the Ultra Button suspensory device and the BioSure Regenosorb interference screw fixation. The femoral sided suspensory fixation is the preferred soft tissue technique as it allows the graft to have the appropriate aperture graft fit in the tunnel with suspension on the lateral femoral cortex. Plus, this femoral sided fixation has also been tried and proven well for years. The ultra button makes it far easier for the surgeon as it eliminates any preoperative and intraoperative calculations that were previously involved using the endo button. The adjustable loop seats the graft with no thinking involved. On the tibial side, my preference is to use the BioSure Regenosorb interference screw sized line to line with the tibial tunnel diameter. This screw has an open architecture to allow for more bony ingrowth as the graft incorporates and the screwdriver itself seats nearly the entire length of the screw, which decreases the risk of any intraoperative screw failure upon entry. Hamstring tendon autograft ACL reconstruction is used predominantly for non-collision athletes who wish to return to cutting pivoting sports and those who prefer to avoid any risk of anterior kneeling pain, sometimes caused by bone patellar tendon bone autografts. It's also used uh, in those patients who accept postoperative hamstring weakness. When choosing a soft tissue graft, the literature dictates that diameters less than 8 millimeters are more prone to re-rupture and early revision, published by the Moon and Mars study groups. Thus, with a four-stranded hamstring autograft, we aim for at least 8 millimeters. After a thorough diagnostic arthroscopy of the knee, the remnant ACL fibers are debrided to allow room for the new ACL graft. The Werewolf Flow 50 device allows us to quickly strip off any soft tissue that may hinder our ability to visualize the back wall and appropriately target our tunnel position. The femoral tunnel in this right knee follows the origin of the more isometric antromedial AM bundle located at the 1030 position from the coronal plane, posterior to the lateral intercondylar ridge and superior to the bifurcate ridge, ensuring that at least two millimeters of adequate back wall is preserved from the posterior articular cartilage. The knee is then flexed to 90 degrees, the guide pin then drilled from inside out using the angled endofemoral guide. Here, the director single fluted 10 millimeter reamer is used to a depth of approximately 20 millimeters. This single fluted reamer allows for a safe passage into the notch. Always ensure the blade is pointed vertical to avoid any cartilage damage to the medial femoral condyle upon entry and exit. At this point, your choice of tibial guide can be used. In this example, a tip-to-tip -tip adjustable degree guide is used with a guide pin and barrel reamer sized to 10 millimeters. The tibial guide is again positioned at the ACL footprint between the tibial spines adjacent to the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus and approximately 10 to 11 millimeters anterior to the fibers of the PCL. The prepared graft and the ultra button construct is marked to know when to flip the button and to ensure that it lays between the cortex and the IT band. The adjustable loop allows us to also reduce the graft into place without any assistance by pulling on the looped cobraid suture with one hand and providing counter tension with the other. As you can see, the graft is reduced into place on average, a 25 millimeter length by the diameter of the tunnel is used. To avoid any risk of capturing the knee, the knee is held in full extension as distal ends of the graft are placed under tension and fixated with the BioSure Regenosorb screw. Currently, there is no clear consensus in the literature with respect to best fixation angle for soft tissue ACL reconstruction However, there are studies currently ongoing. Final examination of the knee reveals a negative Lachman and full knee range of motion. 
For soft tissue grafts, I choose to secure the distal lens with backup fixation in a tenodesis fashion using a BioSure peak screw. Here, a nine millimeter unicortical socket is made perpendicular to the tibia. This pitchfork is then used to place the tendon ends into the socket under tension. And finally, secured with an eight by 25 BioSure peak screw. You can see here that the tendon ends are now secured. Arthroscopic view of the ACL ensures that the graft is taut. Any remaining tension can be completed through the looped suture of the ultra button proximally and full extension viewed to ensure there is no graft impingement. Postoperatively, the patient with an isolated ACL reconstruction will be weight-bearing as tolerated in a hinged knee brace for six weeks with full range of motion and quads control to begin right away.